Good evening, everyone. I came here today not to try and force you into my beliefs, but to ask you to keep an open mind. Today, we'll be discussing the issue of hazing within organizations. College is said to be the best four years of our lives. It is a place where we grow, learn, and develop new relationships. It is a chance for us to finally find where we fit in and discover who we are. When you embark onto your own and enter college, you soon realize that you are a small fish in a big pond. One of the best and easiest ways to make friends and feel involved is by joining organizations such as Greek Life or sports teams. These are special organizations because you must meet certain requirements to join. They have an image and a reputation that makes them elite. Why are they so elite, you may ask? Well, there's a certain amount of work that goes in becoming a member of these groups, and this work is often considered hazing. Let me first begin by reading what hazing prevention defines hazing as. Hazing is defined as any action taken or situation created intentionally that causes embarrassment, harassment, or ridicule, risks emotional and or physical harm to members of a group or team, whether new or not, regardless of the person's willingness to participate. There are three main reasons why hazing is illegal. There are types of hazing that are violent, embarrassing, and harassing. There have been horrible stories that defend the anti-hazing laws. Just to shed some insight onto the subject, when I researched worst hazing stories, my stomach turned into knots. There were stories of members having their ears stapled, wrists burned with cigars, or women stripped and have their fat circled. These forms of hazing are uncalled for and unsettling. For the record, I would like to announce that I am not a supporter of society's overall idea of hazing. However, I do believe that the definition of hazing in the law is stricter than need be. The laws of what is considered to be hazing should be revised and altered. I am a member of a sorority at the University of Rhode Island, where I am now a senior. I joined my sorority first semester of my freshman year. And during recruitment, there were a lot of rumors going around about hazing. I was a little hesitant, and I was a little scared. But I told myself that if anybody asked me to do anything that I was truly uncomfortable with, that I would just leave. Once I received a bit to my sorority, I started to attend meetings where I was informed that my sorority no longer hazes due to the fact that they had just been reprimanded for it. Our nationals, the rule makers, were strictly watching to see if we continued to do anything wrong. Since every girl that had already been a member was hazed, my pledge class quickly became resented for the same thing not having been done to us. Not only did the older girls hate us, but also as a pledge class, it became a struggle to deeply get to know my fellow 36 pledge sisters. I understand laws behind not allowing members to force one another to drink, to do drugs, to engage in any type of sexual activity, but I do not understand why activities such as a scavenger hunt, a raid, a pledge project, nicknames, or simply calling somebody a pledge are illegal. Some of what I have mentioned would actually be beneficial for new members of a sorority, fraternity, or even a sports team. They allow the opportunity for everyone to get to, to, get to know one another and to develop deep bonds and relationships. This is what Greek life is all about. Sororities and fraternities were also built on the foundation of tradition. My pledge class begged to do a scavenger hunt or to get a nickname but this was a risk they could no longer allow. These restrictions made us feel left out and less invested into the house as the older pledge classes. Hazing also allows for respect to be established among seniority in the house. Personally, this is an issue my house has been dealing with. According to Cornell University, only 12% of students identified themselves as having been hazed. Therefore, some students either do not realize or do not agree that they have been hazed. The types of hazing that I am referring to, such as memorizing information and respecting seniority, have not been proven to be detrimental to students. Hazing is not only beneficial while you are a member of these organizations in school, but the lessons that can be learned from certain forms of hazing can help you when you enter the real world. I am about to embark into the real world, and I have found that any hazing I have gone through has helped me. First, it has built my character. I'm a stronger person for it, and it has prepared me for any criticism or rejections that I may have to face in the future. <clears throat> I can handle these criticisms respectfully and learn from them. I believe that there is a certain hierarchy when you enter the business world. 
Everyone must start from the bottom and work their way up. You get what you earn, and you have to work hard to be where you want to be. By having to learn members' names and helping members with what they need, pledges earn their spot in a house or on a team. Without this, members would be joining without having to do any work to earn that spot. I believe that these nonviolence forms of hazing could help teach students the sense of hierarchy and motivation so that when they enter the real world, they understand that you have to start from the bottom and work your way up. Some may say that hazing is dangerous, embarrassing, and unnecessary. I would have to agree that certain types of hazing do fall under that jurisdiction. It is with my personal experience and the opinions of others that I ask you to reconsider and reevaluate your perspective on the issue of hazing. Without minor hardships to overcome, how do we, as young adults, expect to grow and learn who we are? These challenges exist to separate those of us who are willing to endure them from those of us who are not. The ones who are not willing, willing should not be granted a spot within these elite organizations. Some of these traditions that are now considered hazing are what make each house special and different, and they are what makes it a place for you to find people you share common interests with. Nobody can force new members or pledges to do something they are dead set against. If they tell you that in order to be a member of the house, you must do X, Y, and Z, then it is your option at that point whether to leave or to stay. By someone simply calling you a pledge instead of a new member, would you feel that your life and your well-being have been put at risk? It is with these thoughts in mind that I urge you to put yourselves in the shoes of those college students who are affected by this issue. Thank you and good night.